Let's run it back to 2015. People were flying casually. It seems like every local game store had a small league, and it feels like every weekend there was a tournament going. During this brief sparkle in time, the tabletop, the tabletop wargaming industry saw an influx of new players like it's never seen before or since. Is this golden age of wargaming possible again? Never tell me the odds. We're talking X-Wing the Miniatures game. Punch it, Chewie. Welcome to Corner Case. You're in the hobby corner. I'm your host, Deck. X-Wing the Miniatures game first edition was one of the most successful product experiences for wargaming by far in recent memory. It brought so many new hobbyists and players into the fold, myself included. I made so many friends during that time, and it's because of this, this game, X-Wing, that I enjoy the hobby today. Despite a rapid decline in the popularity over the last five years, I think no other game has been able to successfully repeat or surpass X-Wing's success as a good product experience entryway into wargaming as a hobby. Let's take a look at what made X-Wing First Edition so successful that first few years, and I think by doing that, we'll very quickly start to realize that it's still a great product for today, and we actually still need it. First up, let's talk about the miniatures themselves. That's why we're into this hobby, we like the toys, and X-Wing had really good toys. At the scale that they were making, the detail was really good, but most importantly was that they were pre-painted. I think that this one feature of the minis being pre-painted cannot be underestimated. It was so important because basically it made the product good for the average consumer. It actually veils the hobby part of the hobby, the painting and all that. It veils it from the average consumer. So people who wanted to paint were by no means excluded because they could just paint over the pre-paint. People who wanted to play, they, they didn't even have to think. They just bought the models and they could play right away. And then people who only wanted to collect the models, they just, they just got a good toy. So just that feature of being pre-painted, I think was very, very pivotal to the success of this product as a whole and should not be, should not be understated how important that was. No other game so far in the last five years that I've seen has, has tried pre-painted. Maybe the cost is, is, is prohibitive, but I think if you want a good experience entry point into the hobby, based on the success of X-Wing First Edition, I would consider pre-painted table stakes. Next, I wanna talk gameplay. So the gameplay of X-Wing First Edition was so elegant. Um, it was so easy to teach somebody. Um, that's probably the most important part. Um, and I think the cool thing is that it introduces really important core concepts for tabletop war games in general. Uh, for example, the range band mechanic and the firing arc mechanic uh, translate directly into mechanical bonuses for your dice. So it rewards you, incentivizes you for good positioning. And that's just a core concept across most tabletop war games you're going to play. And this is just such an elegant introduction into that idea. The next part of the gameplay is the factions. At first, there were only three. There was like Scum, Imperials, and Rebels. And if I play any other miniatures game nowadays, there's like 10 plus factions. So that makes a lot of good replayability and dynamic interactions for people who have waded far enough into that ocean. But for people on shore, I think that that's like a lot to comprehend. So I thought three factions for X-Wing to start was perfect because each faction had a clear identity. People could make choices about what they wanted to play. They had enough options without being overwhelmed. So I think that shouldn't be overlooked either. The next most important thing is the game length. So the game length being only 30 to 90 minutes long was absolutely um, critical to the, to the success of this game. Because I remember my friend John taught me how to play over lunch at the office. And at 30 to 90 minutes, you could feasibly get two, sometimes three games in an evening. And, and we all know as adults that with, with juggling responsibilities, you wanna maximize your game store evenings. So being able to play two games, like almost guaranteed, that's, that's amazing. What that also meant is not only that you get more games in, but at least in my area in the Bay, almost every store had like an X-Wing night. So I could feasibly do an unplanned pickup game on almost any night if I had time. Cause you could show up to a game store, maybe two guys were already playing. Hey, can I play winners? That's all possible when you have a 30 to 90 minute game length. And that's what makes it so accessible for, for someone who may be uninitiated. 
you know, someone who's never been to a game store before and decided that they wanted to play. I'm not going to my local game store and getting a random pickup game of 40k unplanned on any given night. I have to plan that. So I think that game length component, it's not only that you could play at the office during your lunch break, it's not only that you could play here, it's, it's that you could get multiple games in and, and pick up games were so easy. So game length, absolutely critical to the success of this first edition of X-Wing. The next thing is that just the total size of the game was really small. So basically you're, you're playing with three to five, you know, maximum eight models in a game. You know, I think it was 100 points back then. And so what that means is you could feasibly go to a tournament on the weekend with less than $100 worth of models. I think a few games can actually achieve this, but X-Wing was very consistent where you could go to the store, play a game, you have less than $100 invested. Maybe you won't win a tournament, but you could win games with a small investment. What that also means is that it was easy to transport games. So I could bring my entire collection of X-Wing to the store every night, you know, that was convenient for me, but some people would bring just like a lunchbox and just have like three to five models and that was nice. So that, that game size, you know, both cost and efficiency for travel, not to be overlooked. I want to show you guys the carry that I was bringing for my main faction, which was Imperials. You'll see that I, I actually cut custom foams out uh, and I put this like faux leather over the top of them. And for the area that's actually two layers of foam, I cut out these little handles. And that's, that's really cool. I'm super excited about it. You'll, you'll notice some models are missing because they, they, you know, I'm, I'm painting them. Um, but, you know, I think another important feature of this pretty sweet and compact carry is uh, no codex. I think the Star Wars IP is also really important to the success here. The Star Wars IP is mass appeal. It appeals to a broad audience, like gender, age, and it's been around a long time. I think it actually tapped into a pent-up demand in the market for a good Star Wars game. Um, you know, I'm a big proponent for Warhammer Underworlds. I think Underworlds actually, it doesn't get enough credit, but it's actually a good entry point into the hobby. I, I think that, you know, the size of it, the game, everything that I've said above is almost true of Warhammer Underworlds, but the thing that keeps it out of the mainstream, I actually think is the IP. Like, nobody knows what the Age of Sigmar IP is, and that keeps it out of the mainstream. Like, what is this faction? I don't even know. If only Games Workshop would make a movie or an animation so I could get emotionally invested in this. The last point is distribution. The fact that you could buy X-Wing the Miniatures game at your local Target or Barnes & Noble was clutch because I know that at least in the yay where I'm at, there's not, I have my options in terms of multiple local gaming stores to go to. Within like a 30 mile radius, I have like five, six options of game stores to go through. I could go to a different game store every night, but I know that people living in different areas don't always have that option. So that distribution option of being able to buy your models at Target or Barnes & Noble was really, really important. More people could buy the models, so more people could play. Simple. All right, so to summarize today's rant, we have small game length. That means that we can have multiple or flexible games. We have uh, cool models that are pre-painted, that's really important. Uh, small game size means that you can transport the models and the whole game very easily, and you can actually play tournament lists sub $100. And the IP is mass appeal, and the product is uh, distributed at mass as well. X-Wing was the hero we needed and the hero that we still need today. No other game has been able to succeed X-Wing's good experience entry point into our hobby so far. And I honestly think that wargaming as a hobby, as a community, is worse off without the popularity of X-Wing. Maybe one day when our hobby is on the brink, uh, an X-Wing will appear um, uh, against, against the sun at the last minute like Gandalf and the Rohirrim at Helm's Deep. But until then, I'll be listening to Drake. Don't really need no new friends, no new friends, no, no, no. As always, thanks for hanging out with me in the Hobby Corner. I hope you enjoyed your time here. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps. And see you around. Even in death, I still subscribe.